Britain's musical director at that time was Bob Cranham. He was a Christian. One day in 1987, he told Helen he thought God wanted him to give up the music business. I thought, oh, a bit religious, you know. Uh, um, I said, well, why would he want to do that? He said, well, because I think he wants me to be a preacher. I said, oh. I said, but I said, now hold on now, your music is a gift from God, thinking how clever I was. He says, yeah, you're right, it is a gift from God. Um, but if he wants me to do something else and leave it alone, then that's what I'm going to do. And that amazed me, actually, and impressed me greatly. I remember going back to my husband, who was my boyfriend at that time, John, and saying, I don't know what it is, Bob Scott, but I envy his faith. Helen was then deeply disturbed by a book exploring Old Testament texts prophesying the coming of a Messiah. The Jewish author had become convinced that these referred not just to some future promised era of peace and harmony, as Orthodox Jews believe, but to Jesus, in Hebrew, Yeshua. Now she sings about him. I'll go and buy a Bible and check these things out. So I went to W.H. Smith, and there was this whole array of Bibles. I thought, I'll buy one that doesn't say Holy Bible, because Christians put that. And I found one that just said the Bible. So I got this Bible, and uh, it had all sorts of stuff at the bottom of each page where you can cross-refer backwards and forwards. And I opened up, and I checked it out, and there, these prophecies were there. All through. Uh, the, the prophets, Jeremiah and Isaiah and Zechariah, were talking about this the suffering servant coming humbly and, and then coming later in glory. And very specific prophecies about where he would be born, um, how he would be born, what he would be called, how he would die, how he would rise from the dead, and so forth. It's all there in the Old Testament. So I went on to read the rest of the, the New Testament or the New Covenant um, in the light of that and came to the conclusion in my mind, in my head, that this Jesus must be the fulfillment of these prophecies, these messianic prophecies, and therefore he must be the Messiah. The implications were momentous. How would friends and family react? Was she still Jewish? If so, how could she retain her Jewishness in a Gentile church? She found the long-term answer was to worship in North London with a group of other Messianic Jews and sympathetic Gentiles. Every Friday night, they combine a celebration of the Jewish Sabbath, or Shabbat, with readings and study of the New Testament. Yet the turning point for Helen came early on at an Anglican church, where she'd been taken by friends. Something happened that night, and I was, I was weeping. And it, I, I don't cry in public. I'm very aware of being sort of well-known and trying to always be kind of right and cool. I was just broke, broke down and wept right there and uh, was just praying and thanking God and just praying for Israel and my Jewish people that, and that he would sort of do the same thing to them. Um, so that was when, that's what I say, when it went to, from my head to my heart that night. So far, only a tiny percentage of Britain's 400,000 Jews have taken this path, so an annual international conference in Southampton helps make them feel less isolated. Here, representatives of America's better established 200 or so congregations mingle with members of scattered groups from Holland, Belgium, South Africa and elsewhere. In Israel, the number of fellowships has grown to over 30. This has stirred up some strong feelings. Recently, the Israeli Supreme Court refused residence permits to two British Messianic Jews on the grounds that, as followers of Jesus, they were no longer Jewish. Families, too, can reject believers. Harold Mitten became a follower of Jesus in 1955 through the American evangelist Billy Graham. Join that two over there for the oh, Praise God. Uh, my mum was a widow, so I was the man of the house, and it didn't, do, it didn't go down too bad with me. But with some Orthodox Jews, it can go down very bad. What can happen? You can be excommunicated, you can be thrown out. They can have a funeral for you. 
and uh, you can really have it rough. But then again, you know, that's how it goes. Sylvia Burns wondered for a time if she were the only Jew in the world who believed in Jesus as Messiah. News that Helen Shapiro shared her conviction was a real boost. It also helped reconcile her family to it. Well, my mother had great difficulty in, um, well, with what had happened to me. She believed that I wasn't a Jewess anymore, which isn't true. And I started attending the London Messianic Congregation. And um, when I told her that Helen Shapiro was a believer, she was astounded. She, she was uh, very, very surprised. And then it was OK for me to attend the meetings when I would go over. Yes, it, 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 it meant a lot that uh, then I was normal again. <laughs> I was like, it's OK, because so I wasn't the only mad one. There were others as well. <laughs> Shema During their worship, Messianic Jews still sing the ancient Jewish prayer, praising the oneness of God. To Orthodox Jews, this can be puzzling. If Messianic Jews believe that God is three, why say he is one? We believe that there is one God, the central prayer for the Jewish people is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. But in Hebrew, there are two words for one. There is Yechid and there is Achad. Yechid means singular. And God is not singular, but he is one. He's a corporate unity made up of his spirit, his fatherhood, and his Messiah. And that's, that's something that we believe. We are taking up the age-old responsibilities that God gave our forefathers in celebrating the festivals in an authentic Jewish way and the Shabbat, keeping kosher. We are not under a law in terms of our salvation doesn't depend on doing these things. Salvation is free, but our being part of a Jewish people does depend on taking up these things and uh, living out uh, an authentic Jewish life.